and there was also two village sites down there on that property. Uh, this, it, this property is located about three miles downriver uh, on uh, Lucas Park Drive. I was down there two weeks ago and took a picture. You'd never know that there was anything ever down there. It is just all grass. But uh, we, we had some Saturdays and Sundays and holidays working there. It took us like a year and a half to excavate that mound. And from what I remember, and I'm 77, and that was back when I was 17, uh, there was 38 or 39 burials uh, from that mound. I recall one clump of burials. There was four or five, and they were cremated. And I, and I would imagine that people had uh, a choice back in those days, whether they want to be cremated or, or just buried. And uh, we, as you all know, the cremation process is, it takes a lot of heat to, to burn a bone to dust. And we, we had dug in there in one, one of the squares, and we had found this bundle of bones. And they didn't do a very good job of cremating. And because some of the bones were black and red, and some of them were burned pretty good, but we noticed, Ellis and I were looking at it, and we noticed that there was little niches on the bones. And through discussing it and looking at, at other places where this has happened, we feel that they were defleshed, that the Indians defleshed those bones before they cremated them. For some strange reason, we don't know why. And they pile logs on top and try to cremate the bones and take them to ashes, but they didn't do a very good job. And that was one of the strange things we found down there. The one burial that I have pictures of uh, is uh, I understand is the largest Indian ever excavated in the state of Kentucky, Hopewell. He was five foot eight, inch, eight inches tall. And uh, we had some experiences down there. Uh, all the stuff that I've got is it was not found down there. It was found in the area because all the material went to the museum and it was uh, on display. That burial that I have back there, the, the large burial, was on display at the museum for 26 or 27 years before the Indian movement came along and they had to take it off display. And uh, so that's about all I've got to say about it. it, it, it the, you're welcome to look at the pictures. And uh, those, those Indians, they, they had no care. They'd go where they want. They didn't have to pay no property tax because they, they didn't own the land. <laughs> so that's all I've got to say. just 15 years so this has all been very interesting learning of the history and the <coughs> land uh, sale and all the, um, the ice age and just you know really great information so I brought baskets from an Indian tribe that my mother collected uh, she was a very interesting person and loved to meet people all over and so she got interested in Native Americans and began in Arizona and with the Papago tribe and they created these beautiful baskets that I have a few of. They're all handmade, and if you were to go out and purchase them, they're quite expensive um, on eBay or you know whatever. But I have a few that I collect that I retained after she passed away, and she just was so interested in the American Indians, and I'm just happy to be able to pass some of those on and, and display them. So I don't. Um, there's really not much more information that I have, but they're beautiful back there, and if anybody has any questions, uh, I can answer them. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me here. Um, my name is Steve Airy, and I've lived here in Boone County for about 15, 16 years now. 
love this country. This, this area is beautiful. I'm from northern Illinois where it's very flat. A lot of corn, a lot of soybeans, so this is very nice. Um, I started collecting Native American items uh, based on my uncle being from the Sioux tribe in uh, South Dakota. And he, at the time, was in performance. He had a basketball team where they're all Native Americans and they traveled all over, like the Harlem Globetrotters. And at night, he would be making things, repairing items, fixing things, making different stuff. And so at an early age, he showed me how to do the beadwork, quill work, different things that was normal for him to do. So I picked that up and kept doing it and so forth. So I'm an engineer. I work here at a local company here in Florence. And it's just a hobby for me to, to do restoration work for Native American items. Um, I do have people sending me things from all over the country, items from museums and so forth where they're missing little pieces of leather, little pieces of you know beadwork or something that need repair. Um, the Eidelberg Museum in Indianapolis sent me a, a boy's fully beaded vest. When they sent it to me, they insured it for over $10,000. Wow. I fixed it and sent it back to them. But I don't charge hardly anything for it. I just enjoy it. Uh, I have Indians from all the U.S. sending me items to do repair work. Um, so it's just something I do for a hobby, and I enjoy it. Um, in addition to that, I'm always looking at arrowheads and finding arrowheads. And I have found some here in the Boone County region. Um, that's about it. <laughs> Do you do any hafting? Do you do any hafting? Uh, you know, handles. Do you put handles on uh, artifacts? No, I, I've not done that. No. Not done that. No, I, I've done uh, brain tanning. I, I use sinew to sew and uh, beads. I get beads from out to Texas, Montana, different places to match beads and so forth. Um, quill work, I've done some quill work, but no, I've never done that, done that. Any other questions? All right, thank you so much. Where, where, where did the Indians get the beads? The, the ones that, that I've worked with were Czech, Czechoslovakian beads. They were traded, a trade item. They started out large size beads, and then as, as a the years went by, they got smaller and smaller beads. So they traded for them. Traded for them. Okay. Now remember, each one of these folks have, have uh, items in the back for display. So don't go away without taking checking that out. And then finally, we have Dave Langman. <coughs> Dave's a local fellow from Francisville, right? Uh -huh. Are you still up in Francisville? All right, great. Okay, tell us about what you do. I, I just want to say what a uh, blessing it's been to be raised in an uh, uh, area with such rich history. And especially down in the, the valley, the, the Ohio River Valley itself, where I was lucky enough to be raised. Uh, farming and whatnot, you, you know, plow a field, you'd see it, you walk the riverbanks and the creeks, and, um, and it's always been a, uh, a gift and a connection to the ancient ones that lived here, so um, it's just, just been an honor. I want to thank you. And if you got any questions about my finds, let me know. <laughs> Remember, um, everyone's going to uh, have items on display also on Saturday from 11 to 3 out of the little museum. So uh, just because you've heard the guys here tonight, don't expect that it'll be a repeat. They'll bring some more things. I know uh, Mr. O'Madden told me, by the way, Mr. O'Madden's a member of our group and has been for quite a while. So he's one of us. So we're so proud of him and all of these gentlemen and ladies. 
who have uh, contributed to our program tonight and we urge you to uh, look carefully at their items look carefully at the uh, land grant that we have and the award that we won and um, the, if you want to take another peek at that at the invitations that we received from the churches for the dedications um, please do so we have some members of our uh, historic marker uh, committee here this evening and I'd like them to come forward and be recognized Yvonne Edwards and Yvonne is on our historic partners committee and I did see um, Wilma McMillan here so if you ladies would come up and we can and have the preservation board here this is partly due to what you've been able to do with us now I ask Steve to get his name right out again uh, uh, Bruce is here too. Bruce, you're on that committee. Mike Rouse is on that committee, and he unfortunately had to leave early. And um, and Matt Becker is on that committee, and he could not be here this evening either. So we'll get a picture of those of you on the historic. And I tell you, these folks have been working hard. They've been thinking about where we can put some additional historic markers. And uh, we appreciate their work in that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, you all. Right. Don't forget our upcoming meetings. They're listed in the newsletter. If you didn't get one in the mail, um, there's copies of them over there. And remember, we will not be here in two months. We will be at Petersburg. Right. This will be our out and about uh, trip. So that sounds like a good time there, too. So thank you all so much for coming. I'm so glad to have met some of you for the first time. Ask you to visit with our uh, presenters. We have the Indians were like this Native Indians.